Hello, and welcome to the Fit News Podcast. I am your host, Jen Shaver. And joining me today, back again, is Erin Tennant. She is the owner of Grow Well, and she's a certified health and wellness coach. She can she consults and coaches corporate, small business, and individual clients to create health and wellness programs and plans. She works with her clients to create sustainable behavior changes and habits to support their vision and goals. Erin is back today because her and I have started this special project that we are calling the Ask Us Anything podcast. We want this to be a part of the Fit News podcast, a regular part of the Fit News podcast. We want it to be a free resource for you. So as you are listening today, if you think of a question that you have, send it to me fitwithshaver at gmail.com. That will also be in the show notes because we want to answer your questions. Ladies, we are here for you to help you. So we are going to get started with our first round of ask us anything questions that we have. And we can't wait to do more of these episodes. Erin, thank you for taking the time to join me again today. Thank you. I love this. I'm stoked about this. I'm so excited. Yes able to spend time with you right on a regular basis <laughs> and talk all things health and wellness because I was just telling you off the podcast how I'm a nerd about it. So love, love, love and really excited to be a part of this because it is a free resource. And you know, so many times I've had questions and concerns alongside of, you know, um, worries and doubts and fears. Am I doing it right? But throughout my health and wellness journey, and I am just so happy to be able to give back because I was able to look into free resources to help me leverage my health and wellness. So right. I'm glad that I get to be a part of this for your life. Yes. Yeah. And and it's such a, it's a great place to start, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a good starting point. So let's get started with that exact thought in mind, because one question that I know we have both received is I've been off of the fitness habit, right? Or fitness wheel and the diet wheel for quite some time. I just fell off the wagon and I've gained 20 pounds or I've gained 40 pounds and I'm feeling really overwhelmed. Where do I start? Yeah. Where do I start? That's a mm -hmm. great question. Now, <laughs> as a health and wellness coach, yeah, you have to answer that for yourself. Right. So what I would suggest is really stopping any time before you hear some of our thoughts, some of our tips, some of our answers, and stop and answer that question for yourself. Right. Because really, the thing that matters most is what comes from within you. Yeah. Because you know yourself better than anyone. So anytime we ask a question, I would stop first. Pause this podcast and answer it yourself mm -hmm. because there is so much information out there and it's all very helpful. But if it does not resonate with you personally and you have some resistance to it, mm -hmm. you can get curious about it or you can just move on to what does resonate with you. What excites you? What are you curious about? What are you interested about? And that is going to help you specifically. Mm -hmm. So just that would be my first tip is where to start. Start with your answers. Start with what's coming up for you. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, what I like to do with my clients is ask them, was there a time in your life that you would have considered yourself successful in the health and wellness arena? Were you at a weight that you were comfortable? Were you doing something in right. terms of movement or eating a certain way that you felt your best in? And go back to that. Mm -hmm. and get some clues let yourself be that person again envision and embody what that's like and take note and whatever your brain is offering you take note was I eating regularly what kind of foods were I eating on a regular basis how was I moving my body how did I manage stress you know what emotion did I feel about myself? You know, how did I perceive myself? Was I confident? Did I think I was strong? Was I proud of myself? You know, really take stock of that experience for yourself. And then, you know, there's going to be certain things come up. Well, okay, that was 20 years ago. I didn't have kids. I didn't have the stressful job. I didn't have this 
diagnosis. I wasn't in menopause or premenopause. Right. There's going right. to be things that come up. And yet, we're not trying to replicate the past. We're trying to exactly. find clues of what right. works. Right. Yeah. That, that was the thing I was going to caution against, you know, yeah. maybe it's your 20 year old self, but now you're 45 or 55 and you're like, oh, well, I want that body. Uh, we caution against that. That's not what you are saying no. at all. No. Right. I want you to find when you had that body that you love. Yeah. What were you doing? Right. Because it's really about the behaviors. It's about uh -huh. the decisions. It's about mm -hmm. the mindset. It's about the emotional state. It's about the habits you created for yourself. Right. And yes, some of them will not necessarily translate right, right. now, a hundred percent. Like, so if you were going to the gym six days a week yeah. and you're doing nothing, it's for most people, it's hard to go from nothing to six days. Yeah. So, okay. You were at the gym. What was I doing? I was lifting weights. Oh, and I loved lifting weights. Can I do that now? Can I do that today? Can I right. do that at home? Do I have weight? Is there a snap fitness around the corner? You mm -hmm. know, that I can get a membership and pop in and out once or twice a week. Right. That's really what we're looking for. We're looking for the things that you enjoyed mm -hmm. that you may want to start up again. And if nothing is resonating with you from the past, what do you want to do now? Right. Ask yourself the questions now. What is something that I've always wanted to do for me? Um, I've always wanted to rock climb. I just thought that was cool. So every now and then my husband and I will add that into our movement routine is we'll go rock climbing, you yeah. know, and that had enough in 20 years ago. I did not want to rock climb. Yeah. So if, if there's something that you don't want to leverage from the past, think about your future self, maybe 20 years from now, 10 years from now, a year from now, what do you want to be doing? So you right. can either go to the back and take that and, and use that information to leverage now. Or you can go to the future, right? Kind of envision where you want to be and use those clues, those information, that mm -hmm. information, and pull that into the now, right? And and start implementing it now. And and what I would caution is you're starting. Yes. So you want to adopt a beginner's mindset. Yeah. Imagine like you're going to learn Chinese. You have a job, and you're going to learn one of the many dialects of Chinese. Let's say Cantonese, for example. You gotta pretend like you, you're you're learning the letter. So if you were strength training six days a week before and you want to get back to that, start with one. Exactly. Start with two. Start with three. You gotta start with the foundation, and it. Right. And you gotta baby step it. It's uh -huh. not. You're not gonna go. Most people do not go from zero to a hundred. Right. Well, and what happens is just that because this this episode is airing at the start of the new year. And so yep. we are in uh, resolution season, right? And everybody yep. puts the pedal to the metal on January 1st and they are zooming and they're doing great week one and week two, the car is still kind of driving, but slowed down a little week three. Oh, it's backing off week four. It's almost to a stop. And by February, that car has stopped completely is going nowhere <laughs> because yep. It ran out of gas because they put the pedal to the metal that first week, instead of saying, we're going to, you know, take this slow. Like you mm -hmm. said, if, if we want to start strength training, start with one day, like you said, yeah, you know, yeah. and you might think, well, what is one day going to do? Well, it's going to start to build that foundation, build that habit into becoming part of your routine. Because if you're yeah. forcing that to happen, which is what you're doing when you put the pedal to the metal, when you force it, you can't keep it there. Yeah. One of the best gifts you can give yourself in the new year is the time and the space time. to allow things to settle, to allow yes. things to stick, to, mm -hmm. to really create a solid and sustainable sustainable health and wellness plan for yourself, whether that it includes weight loss, whether it includes a certain way to eat, whether it includes building muscle, maybe, maybe you found out you're pre diabetic, and you want to get out of that zone, and you want to start regulating your insulin levels, it, it can right. be anything. Yeah, it doesn't have to necessarily be weight loss. But whatever that is, you have to give yourself the time and space, like mm -hmm. a student to learn. Yep. Stop, we have to stop expecting that the first time we do something, there's going to be instant gratification. There's going to be an immediate result. It's it, yeah. going to be 
like all of our problems have gone away. We have yeah. fixed it. No, give yourself, I would say a quarter. Yeah. You know, I, I look at it like, because I'm a business minded person, I look at my health and wellness kind of like a business because that translates for me. So I right. do quarterly evaluations. I do quarterly planning. Yeah. That's something that works for me. But at least give yourself, if you, not a quarter, maybe a month, right. maybe two weeks, but do mm-hmm. not expect the first day to have it all figured out and that every day it's mm-hmm. gonna feel like this, look like this, and it's going to be easy. And I think this kind of leads into our next question, yeah. which is, how do we find the motivation right. when we don't have it? Because you've gone full steam ahead yeah. week one, week two, week three, and come week four, you're like, I'm starting to pitter patter along and I'm just exhausted. Right. Well, that in life, life happens, life gets in the way. Oh, and these always. things, because we force them, we didn't make them a part of the routine. We force them into that peg, you know? Mm-hmm. And when we do that and life happens, the first thing we do is, you know, get rid of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, how do we find the motivation? Well, Go back to the foundation. Yep. How are you building your house? How are you building your business? How are you building your health and wellness? And so am I doing this sustainably or am I doing this like restrictive eating, quick diet, yeah. quick fix? Because uh-huh. that's not something I can maintain. And when that cheesecake hits the table or when I'm down and I'm sick with a sinus infection and mm-hmm. I'm freaking out because I haven't gone to the gym for a week and then I don't feel like it the next week because I actually felt better not going to the gym uh-huh. because I actually need rest. If you talk to anybody who has been, I would say, successful in their health and wellness, and I'm going to use the example of physical activity, exercise, right. movement, they have rest. Yeah. Rest is a non-negotiable. It mm-hmm. is, and rest is for some, including myself, is the hardest. Right. Part because a lot of us feel like we're not doing enough. Uh-huh. We're going to fall back into old habits. So it's right. really uncomfortable for some of us to rest. It's yeah. better of us to do an all or nothing. But think of mm-hmm. this as a strategy, a business plan. You have to have rest on a consistent basis if you're going to be moving on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. Because again, you need balance. Yeah. And when you when you have balance, then you're able to keep refilling, refueling and keep going. Right. When you're either on I'm not doing enough or I'm doing too much all the time, then that's when we don't experience the balance. Exactly. We don't have right. the harmonization that right. we're looking for. So right. if you're going to start something and you're going to learn how to eat you know, differently, you're going to learn how to move your body differently, you're going to learn how to stress manage, you have to be able to allow yourself the time and space to have maybe some of the old habits coming back, but doing it in a strategic way, right? Not a there's something wrong with me, because this is happening. Uh No, this is happening, because it takes time to change behavior, it takes time to change mindset, it takes time to learn how to emotionally regulate. Right. And so motivation sometimes naturally comes and sometimes you have to cultivate Mm -hmm. and you can't cultivate it from nothing. Right. When you are doing something, it always takes energy, whether it's brain energy, physical energy. That's just science. It takes energy to make things. If you have no energy, you have no motivation. So that rest is banking energy to create motivation. Yep. So you have to find time to rest your body, rest your mind, rest your emotions, rest the negative self-talk, yeah. rest from the maybe high expectations, the all mm-hmm. or nothing thinking, the perfect. Yeah. Ha- and by rest, I mean compassion. Yeah. Allowing yourself to be human through this learning process, not being a robot, not being perfect. Yeah. You know, yeah. Allowing yourself to rest from these high expectations we put on. Yeah. And I think that's, that's and just it. It's understanding that it's about consistency and not perfection and the difference between the two. Mm-hmm. And so that's. Consistency. You know, yeah. Is will always trump perfection. Exactly. Yeah. Always. I, I, yeah. One of the biggest takeaways I've learned through, you know, losing and maintaining over 130 pounds and just changing 
how I treat myself, how I talk to myself, how I look at myself, how I use my time, all of it. Yeah. Is being compassionate and right. and allowing myself to be a human being and not being perfect. And it's about and and I've adopted this mindset and anyone can have it. Something is better than nothing. Exactly. I always tell myself if I'm not going to show up as my best self today for whatever reason, maybe I have a headache, maybe I'm in a negative space, mm-hmm. maybe I've got sick kids today, right. maybe you know I got a flat tire, something unexpected happened, whatever it right. may be. My job is to show up one percent better yeah. than my natural tendency would tell me to, which for me is all or nothing. Yes. And for so many off. that, that, that all or nothing is, is the mindset that, you know, takes the train off the rails. Yeah. It's that all or nothing and perfectionism. Yeah. So, yeah. So for example, last week I was struggling with a sinus infection and I just knew, oh my gosh, the weight, the gym and weightlifting is not, is right. not in it for me, mm-hmm. but I can get out of bed. Mm-hmm. So I have an agreement I made with myself. If I can get out of bed, then I can hit my step count because I can walk right. and I can stand and I can move. So I don't have to sweat. I don't have to go to the gym yeah. I have to run. But what I can do is get some movement in and I right. can move my body mm-hmm. and I can do it and take breaks. I don't have to walk on the treadmill for an hour. I can go for 10 minutes here. I can let go walk the dog. I can maybe right. run the laundry upstairs. Maybe I can run the vacuum. Maybe when I have to run to Target to get medicine I could park a little farther away right so many like that ways little things right yeah so it's finding ways to be compassionate with yourself during those off moments during those not you know quote-unquote perfect or best self moments Mm -hmm. and just be uncomfortable with it right build the tolerance and the and the emotional muscle to be uncomfortable that you're not your best yeah, but you're doing your best, uh-huh. or you're doing enough, right? And, and that okay. enough is something which is better than the nothing. Yeah, yeah. So all of that kind of plays into each other, mm-hmm. but you have to have a good foundation, right? And compassion has to be there. Yep. And you have to be able to do things to bank, so you can have the motivation when you don't feel like it. Because I'm telling you. If I was running myself thin, mm-hmm. I personally struggle with motivation and yeah. I will burn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially we know that during that perimenopause time, that motivation is something that begins to wane. And, yeah. you know, then women struggle with that because then they feel, oh, I'm lazy or I have no motivation or, you know, I can't do this. But if they learn and if they understand where that's coming from and that things are going to look different on a daily basis. Yeah. And so it's just preparing yourself to deal with each day as it comes. Exactly. And find something that will motivate you. So right. for me, you know, I really enjoy music mm-hmm. and television. Those are, those are just two things I enjoy. So I make sure I have some really good playlists yep. when I'm going to work out, whether I'm at the gym or I'm going to go for a run or I'm going to go for a walk. Mm-hmm. So I have really good music. Um, you maybe know, it's a good, I'm maybe it's good podcast, right? <laughs> yeah, just like this one. Yes, a podcast. Um, also, like if I'm walking on the treadmill, I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do this. Guess what? You bet your butt I'm going to be indulging in the crown or the Supreme, rewatching yeah. the Supreme or something because I love TV yeah. I'm a, I am like I could Netflix and binge all, I could like chill Netflix binge all of it all day long that could be my job yeah. I wish my job was to just watch TV <laughs> but you know if that's your jam or if there's a book on tape do something right. that's going to motivate you maybe mm-hmm. you love to have a conversation with somebody maybe mm-hmm. you want to catch up with a best friend or a family on the phone talk on the phone do something so you don't have to be in your own head Right. Be in your own head of, I don't want to be here. Find a way to turn it around just the littlest bit. But I will also say something that's really helped me with motivation Mm -hmm. is bare minimums and non-negotiable. Yes. 
And that's an agreement that's very personal that you have to set and explore and play with and experiment with yourself. So my right. non-negotiables and my bare minimums, like I just said, when I have a sinus infection, mm -hmm. if I get out of bed, I can hit my step count. If I'm stuck in bed sleeping because I'm not sick, all bets are off. Right. I can see. I, because I, your body needs something different. Yes. But yeah. if I can get myself out of my bed, I can get my step count. And I know I can do it. And it may be, it may be all day long. It may be right up until I go to bed that I'm going to hit my step count. But yeah. I'm going to do it because that's right. the agreement I made with myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So give yourself flexibility. Give yourself room. But also set those non-negotiables, set those bare minimums. And, and same thing. If I can get out of bed, mm -hmm. I can hit my macros. Right. I can absolutely hit my macros. And for me personally, it's protein that I focus mm -hmm. on. Right. As long as I hit my protein, then mm -hmm. all the other ones kind of will fall into place. be fine, fall mm -hmm. into place. Right. But as long as I just focus on my protein. Mm -hmm. and, and and some days, if, if it's that bad that like there's a stomach issue, okay, it's just about eating consistently and it's about eating foods that will heal me. Right, right. So there can be layers, there can be levels, but do something for yourself. Like right. be kind to yourself, treat yourself. Right. There's so, there are, there are so many ways to succeed. And you just got to find that on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. like, get in the habit and build that skill set Yes. If you feel like you don't have it now, that's fine. Start working on it. It mm -hmm. will come and it will become a right. habit. Now I don't even have to think about it. Now I'm like, okay, if I got out of bed, I'm hit my, it's, it's not a non-negotiable. I don't even have to right. have that conversation with myself. Yep. But in the beginning, I had to have back and forth, that inner dialogue, that self-coaching of like, no, if you really want to lose the weight, if you really want your biomarkers to be at a certain level, if you really want to feel a certain way. Mm-hmm a good example for your children and have a quality of life right and reduce certain risks of health issues then yeah. you have to do this for yourself this is what this is the agreement you made mm -hmm. let's, right. let's do the best we can today let's get after it yep yep let's continue let's keep going on um because you brought up macros um you yeah. know and, and protein is one of those macronutrients and um but let's talk about because i know especially a lot of ladies that are midlife are used to the mm. whole calorie thing. And many of them will say, do I have to track my calories? Yeah, I know that's a big one. I love that question. Yeah, yeah. I love that question. Yeah. Because my first issue is, do I have to blank? Right. You don't have to do anything. Right. <laughs> right? You really don't. If you think about it, I mean, you'll have to deal with the consequences, whatever right. that may be. Yep. But you essentially don't have to do anything. Yeah. So when people ask me, do I have to count macros? Do I have to count calories? No. Mm -hmm. there, the beautiful thing is there are so many ways you can come, you, you can lose weight. You can, you can change the body, you can change your body composition. Mm -hmm. You can build healthy habits, whatever your goals are and your vision for yourself, you can do without tracking calories. Now, what I will say is, for me, when I was over 300 pounds, I realized it was a very big distortion um, of what I thought a healthy relationship with food was like. Obviously, my, my weight for me showed that. That's my experience. And I'm only speaking about my experience, not saying everyone right. who's 300 pounds has that same experience. But for me, I realized, oh, my weight is connected to my relationship with food, right. my body, myself. So I want to... I want to come at this at the kindergarten level. Like mm -hmm. I made this choice for myself that I was going to relearn everything. So I decided that for a temporary period of time, I was going to count calories mm -hmm. just to understand myself and my body. Right. So right. I think you have to go into what do you, what are the reasons? What are the goals? So if you right. want to track calories because you want to improve your relationship with yourself and that's mm -hmm. something you want to do right. whether it's long term short term if you feel good in that then yes you should absolutely do that but do you have to no right and then I went from calories to macros mm -hmm. and now I don't really have to count them I just right. know right I, I know on a daily basis I have options and I have things I eat and I and I have fridge and a pantry full of food that I know that I'm going to be in the range of the macros 
I need to be to hit my goals and to feel the way I want to feel. So Mm -hmm. you have to feel good in your decision Mm -hmm. and you have to, um, what do I want to say about this? You have to have your own back. So if yeah. someone's telling you to do something and you don't want to do it, I would get curious and really listen to it. Because I also had people tell me, oh, well, counting calories is just so like restrictive dieting. And, you know, because I, I find myself I, I in the spectrum of, you know, intu- I, I think there's a place for intuitive eating. I think right. there's a place for, you know, I don't like to say restrictive eating, but constraint. Right. And I think right. you have because to if you are spectrum, overeating, then yeah. it can be a helpful tool to get you started in the right direction. But that yes. doesn't and mean that it, it's for everybody all the time. <laughs> yes. And you can put a little bit of both because right. what I did was for me is I said, okay, I'm going to learn how to calorie track. So I just understand what 2000 calories are. Cause that's where I start. Right. Well, that's, that's just it. You know, if, if you yeah. are overeating or you're under eating, if you're in, on either end of the spectrum by counting, it will give you a greater understanding of what your body personally needs. So, so this is, and that's the point because I started off with 2000 and I was starving. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm so hungry. Like, I don't know how people do this. So what I did was I said, okay, well, I think 2000 calories, like I could do this and quote unquote suffer in my mind. Yeah. Or what if I just track my calories of how much I'm eating? And what I realized was eating closer to like 35, four, thousand calories a day Mm -hmm. and I was like okay so cutting in half is a drastic right measure for me so what I did was I said let me try by 500 Mm -hmm. so instead of eating and I didn't say I have to eat right at 35 I was doing 4,000 to 3,500 so I used the scale so I said okay now I'm going to go from uh 3,500 to 3,000 Mm-hmm. Then I went from 35, once I felt good there, I went from 35,000 or I went from 3,000 to 2,500 till I got to about 2,000 calories. And there I kind of, the weight loss was continuous. And then I was like, right. oh, I kind of want to focus on my macros. Right. So you don't have to track calories, but if you want to, whether you're tracking calories, tracking macros, and you have a suggestion of what you should be doing and you feel like it's so tough to get there or you don't feel, you feel a lot of discomfort. I would see where you're at, yeah. whether it's calories, macros, something, you know, maybe looking at your plate and saying, am I eating a fiber at every meal? Do I have a portion of fruits and vegetables? If not, start adding it in. There's so many different ways you can play with it, but find a way that speaks to you. So if calories don't speak to you, do not do it. Right. If you're interested in it, yes, play with it. It's a mm-hmm. useful, helpful tool. Right, right. And that's just it. It's a tool. It's... I, I, I wouldn't use it long term <laughs> and I wouldn't get uber focused on it to where it becomes an, an obsession. And if you are one of those people that, you know, maybe you kind of lean towards it being stay away from it and find another way. Like you said, let's focus on, you know, adding more fruits and vegetables to our plate at every meal. Yep. If numbers freak you out and you mm-hmm. feel obsessive and it's triggering you from past dieting, mm-hmm. past restrictive eating, uh, past weight loss attempts and you failed or you weren't able to keep it up and it brings up a lot of emotions. Um, there are a lot of resources out there. I think one's called like my plate mm-hmm. and, um, it's a really great resource where you can go online and they will, it, it's a recommended view of how your plate should look in terms of carbohydrates, protein, um, fiber, and how dairy and how that should look and, and see what you're doing now. Just start paying attention to what you're doing now. Right. And right. slowly move towards the recommendation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go with another one. This is a big one that we see a lot that we get a lot. Yeah. How do I lose belly fat? <laughs> well, being someone who identifies as an apple shaped body, yeah. good luck, God bless. Right. You know, some of us are just going to, our body types are, we are going to have more skin, mm-hmm. more volume, more curve, more shape, more mass in our stomach. Right. And 
no matter how much you wish it to be different, you cannot actually change your bone structure and the right. way your body is looking. You, you right. have your body. Right, right. However, if you want to shrink your body. Um, yeah, because we know we can't spot reduce. We, we can't yeah, control we can't spot reduce. where we're going to lose the fat and the weight, right? It, it yes. just. It, it, it's going to come where it's going to come. Right. Yeah. So, but what you can do is sometimes we do bloat. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do, you know, our bodies extend in certain areas, especially our stomach. Because I know in the morning, my stomach's the flattest. I just didn't eat for, you know, eight hours. Right. I'm like, oh, that looks nice. And by nighttime, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Wear the stretchy (laughs) pants, you know? So kind of normalizing, I think, you know, we, we understand so you can't just flatten, you know, your stomach you can't just lose belly fat. That's just right. not something you can do. But what you can do is you can inject compassion into mm-hmm. the notion that your body is going to fluctuate on a day to day. basis. Right. And that a lot of stuff you see on the Internet, you see in magazines, you see on TV are the extreme, the one percent. They are manipulated to look a certain way. Yeah. So I love when people get on social media and they're like, okay, this is me posing this way. This is me posing yeah. this way. We look like two completely different people, but it's the same body within seconds. Right. So, so maybe it might be a better alternative to shift the focus from how I look to how I feel. Right. Right. Maybe shifting the focus onto, you know, what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. setting goals in terms of okay well if I just did 10 reps of bicep curls with 10 pounds maybe next week I could do 12 reps at 10 pounds or what if I did 12.5 pounds focus on what you can control and right. versus what you can't control so we right. know we can't control where we lose the weight mm-hmm. but we can control what we're doing and we have we do have some control of what we do with our thoughts and our feelings we can't always right. control what initially comes up to it, but how we manage them. Right. So I would focus on that, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, get those abs going. If you really want to work on it and you want core strength and you want to set your stomach up to look and feel its best, focus on that as a muscle group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. And I would also say that, um, I mean, there, the saying abs are made in the kitchen is a, isn't just a saying, you know, so it's not just about the exercises that you're doing, but it goes back to what are you feeding your body and are you feeding your body the necessary nutrients? Are you feeding it the protein? Are you feeding it the fiber, you know, and starting there because putting garbage in, is not going to give you the results. So, you know, we have to start there, especially when we're talking about women who are in perimenopause and and, uh, menopause. Um, We know that, you know, they tend to hold and have a little more belly fat caused by cortisol, you know, and, and stress. And so, if you are finding that, you know, managing your cortisol and your stress is the first place to start. I wouldn't start with restrictive eating and I wouldn't start with more exercise and I wouldn't start with more cardio. I would start with how's my sleep? How's my, how is my, um, stress? And that's I would, a great, great perspective that I didn't even know, think about. That's amazing. I mean, yeah. That's, that's where I would start. And, yeah. and that's where I, the rest days do come in handy. Exactly. Because because exactly. rest is not just for building muscle. It's also right. for your brain. It's for your emotions. It's for uh-huh. your well-being. Right. So resting could be breath work. Resting could be maybe a day that you do something that fills your cup in joy. Maybe yep. it's sleep. It could be sleep for a lot of us. We're tired. Yeah. Hormonal. You know, rest could be yoga. Like I recently have gotten into hot yoga. Yeah. I, it's just. It's not so much of a, and I go to a very, um, a very relaxing flow class and it's, and it's just been so helpful in my stress. Yeah. And even my husband and my family are like, you seem calmer, especially on Tuesdays. I'm like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, you should do yoga every day. I'm like, I probably should. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, you're managing your cortisol levels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
mutually beneficial. Yeah. All right. We have, let's get into, um, is that all of them? We may have hit all of them. I think we had one more. One more. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, time, 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 time. I just don't have time. Well, the three objections our brain usually gives us, and I was literally saying this because I, I have hormonal acne right now, and I was telling my friends who we were driving to tennis lessons, and they were talking about skincare routines, and I just, I heard my, I, I was hearing myself, like I was having an out-of-body experience, Yeah. and they're like, well, you should do this, you should do that, and I was like, you know what, hormonal acne is just so overwhelming. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. Uh-huh. I don't think I can figure it out, so Usually when you have the objections of time and money and um, your ego, right? those are limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that. And I was like, okay, well, this is where I'm at. I'm not going to shame myself or judge myself that I'm not going to you know, invest myself in figuring out what's going on with my hormonal acne, but I'm aware of it. And I know yeah. this is happening for me and yeah. I'm going to table it for now, but you know what? I'm it's just for me to know that's it and I don't have to do anything so if you're telling yourself I don't have the time it's really normal it's super normal yeah everyone is saying that about something I just don't have the time Mm -hmm. but really here's the deal prioritization is everything yeah and you have to really take a look at your values your long-term vision and really see how bad you want this for yourself. The acne on my face on a one to 10 scale of the importance in my life is below a five. Like it's, it's maybe a four, like it's important. Right. I want my skin to be good, but you know, to, to take the time to invest the money, it means I have to give up other things. Yeah. And so right now it's on a four of my priority level right now, more of my physical health, my well-being, there's some professional goals I have going on. Those are taking precedence mm-hmm. and that's okay. So just telling yourself the truth, but telling yes. yourself you don't have the time is just a limiting belief. Right. So really- I, I think that's I, such a great point because it's almost like you really have to have a come to Jesus with yourself on what are my personal priorities and be honest with yourself about them. Just be honest about it and if you don't want to if, if, if it comes down to something else is taking precedent that's okay but tell yourself right the truth mm-hmm. but for me it doesn't mean that I'm not going to wash my face every day right that I'm not going to still spot treat but am I going to go to the root cause right now probably not yeah is it something that's still on my radar and in my box so anytime I want to unbox it and work on it yes it's available to me but yeah. I don't have to panic. I don't have to worry. I don't have to make it a problem. Right. But really taking time to get clear on your values and your mm-hmm. vision and what you want for your life will really, really help you yeah. decide what you can actually do and what you do have the time for, because we all have the same amount of time. We have 24 yep. hours in a day. Mm-hmm. And it goes by very quickly. Yes. I know that when I, was on started my weight loss journey I had to I had the time but I had to give up some things I had to say no to some things to make time for this right so and that and that's how it's going to be with anything yeah. in life something is going to have to give and again it goes back to being honest with your priorities so what can you give up that might be geez I'm gonna have to give up my TV time. But wait a minute, can I take that TV time, like you mentioned, and take it over to the treadmill? Yep, exactly. So I've been thinking about this hormonal acne and research is can I do this during a time when I'm walking on the treadmill? Can I do it on a time when instead I would be watching TV? And I've been really trying to pay attention to my social media, you know, Mm -hmm. how much time am I spending just scrolling, online shopping, doing things that maybe aren't high on my priority list, but they kind but of feel so good when they're, they're a time that suck. Instant, yeah, they're a time suck, but they're the hit, they're the um they're that instant hit of dopamine for me. Yep. So I have to decide. Well maybe I instead of because I usually get on I usually check social media three times a day. Quick little hit the mm-hmm. dopamine. Mm-hmm. 
maybe my afternoon, I could give that up and spend instead of five minutes scrolling, five minutes starting to educate and inform myself on what is hormonal acne? How, how have people, what are the suggested treatments? Are there treatments? Mm-hmm. You know, really educate myself. And yeah. for someone looking to do that or lose weight, same thing. Mm-hmm. Maybe start, instead of getting on social media, ask yourself three questions, ask yourself all these questions and answer them. Yeah. Where do I start? How do I find the motivation? Do I have the time or do I have to track calories? How do I get a flatter stomach or lose belly fat or target an area of my body? Maybe it's my hips, my push, my, right. you know, my leg, whatever my problem, quote unquote, areas in my right. body, you know, how do I do that? And if I can't target an area, what do I, what can I control and how do I want to look at that? And then how do I find the time? You know, that would be a much better use of your time. Right. And then doing those instant hits of do- hit of dopamine. But notice how I said, I'm never getting on social media again. I'm not doing it. I'm uh-huh. still doing it. Right. But I'm willing to give up just a little to do a little bit more. And that's right. Like, and doing that on a consistent basis is going to give you what you're looking for. Yep. Yep. And that's the key. You know, we didn't, it, it's just, it, it's just like restrictive dieting, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't restrict. We just tapered we took a little bit out to give to over here yep yep yeah and you just have to manage yourself while you do it because again your brain's going to tell you there's something Mm -hmm. wrong i'm not doing it right because you're not getting the instant result yep but i can promise you there is going to be a positive result a positive impact if you stick with something and you're consistent and maybe it's not what you expected Mm -hmm. but it's going to be something Right. You need to be movement forward. So right. yeah. just allow yourself room to grow. It mm-hmm. needs space. It's like, it's, I think of, I'm a plant person. I have so many indoor plants. And sometimes they get to a place that they outgrow their pot. Yeah. And you got to give them more space. So if you feel like you're outgrowing your space and you're over it and you want to lose the weight and you want to change a behavior and you want to build a habit, you want to learn something new and you've outgrown your pot. Mm-hmm. you have to be the one to give yourself room and space. You have to go to another part pot to keep growing. You can't right. just keep growing in the right. same pot. And it, and it might get uncomfortable. Oh, it's super uncomfortable. Growth. Listen, but, I just acknowledge that. Like, yeah, I always acknowledge that. And, and again, it's a muscle. It's a skill set. So right. something I do is because I'm a creature of habit. I love to do the same thing over and over yeah. and over. I do yeah. not like change. That's just no. me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for me, I make these little changes in my life that I just have to practice being uncomfortable. So like yeah. for workouts, for example, strength training, every four to six weeks, six weeks, really, I change it up. Yeah. Let me tell you that first week, second week, ooh, it doesn't feel good yeah. to have to like do something new because I just got off six weeks of quote unquote, perfecting something, doing my best, getting yeah. to that, you know, goal. And now I got to start all over. Yeah. But if we can change the way we think and feel and we can build and by changing, I mean, if we have the initial thought of, I don't like this or this yeah. is uncomfortable, that's fine. Don't, that's not a problem. You have that, but what can right. you do with that yep. to leverage for yourself? How can you make that work for you? We have to be right. responsible for ourselves mm-hmm. always and right. how we, and how we are in our emotional state and how we are with our, mindsets and what we're doing we have to own that mm-hmm. we have to be accountable and yes. when we're not in that space what do we do how do we manage ourselves so we can take care of ourselves mm-hmm. we are adults now we don't have right. parents I mean we have parents but some right. of us do that are still living but we are we're, we are at an age that we can be responsible for yes. ourselves, no matter what our circumstances are. yeah 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 love it all right so here we go. We are going to be doing this regularly. Correct, Erin? <laughs> yes, um, I'm on board. Yep. yep. So we want you listeners to let us know what questions do you have? We would love to answer them. Send them my way and Erin and I will be sure to get together and answer them for you. So fit with shaver at gmail.com is the 
um, email address that you can send your questions to. Uh, you don't have to, you know, write a novel. If you just want to write a quick question and send it off, that works. So just um, get those questions to me and Erin and I will be happy to answer them. So Erin, thank you for taking the time today to join me for this Ask Us Anything episode. And thank you for listening to the Fit News Podcast, and we will catch you next time. Take care.